WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. From WCCO Television, the Northwest's leading news station, this is the 10 p.m. report. everyone an ammonia spill in north branch forced an evacuation of the town's residents but ends without a tragedy minnesota legislators are working long hours this weekend to try and finish their business before the monday adjournment deadline and thunderstorm activity sends a quarter inch hail and 50 mile winds into some areas of the twin cities but topping the news tonight, what began as a dispute among members of the Red Lake Band of the Chippewa Indians ended today in a shootout and takeover of the Indian Bureau Law Enforcement Center. At about 5.15 this morning, a group of dissidents from that band took four police officers hostage. They were locked in a cell, and for the next hour, the demonstrators went on and fired shots into the air using guns and ammunition found inside of that law enforcement building, and then they sent word that they would give up if their demands were met, demands that included the reinstatement of Stephanie Hansen as the tribal treasurer. By the time the federal officials arrived on the scene, all of the hostages had been released. We say all of the hostages. We're not too sure now as we get a report from our Tom Hanneman, who was at that Red Lake Center. And Tom, uh, tell us your story. Well, Don, we arrived in Red Lake around 4 o'clock this afternoon. Keith Brown, photographer Keith Brown and myself, we found that the main road of leading into Red Lake was blocked by a Red Lake fire truck. We got out of the car to shoot some scenes of the uh, police station, which was still smoldering. And at that time, we heard uh, shots fired and uh, some ricochets off the fire engine we were standing next to. Uh, obviously, we were being shot at. So we threw our hands up, and uh, a group of Indians came and uh, wanted to know what we were doing. We explained, and uh, we left that area to go on to shoot uh, some more scenes. And Keith Brown drove a, to a back road to shoot the uh, the police station and also a police car that was aflame, an abandoned police car. He went into the woods and uh, came running back a few moments later. They had fired on him and uh, the bullets hit the water right in front of his feet. Uh, we had three incidents, Don, uh, that happened this afternoon. The third was by far the worst. Uh, we were about ready to leave the area and uh, Keith was going to shoot the final shot of the main street. Uh, I was in the car. Keith was outside with the uh, the door, the back door open. And uh, at that moment, I heard uh, a sound like a, a rock hitting the side of the car. It was a bullet that hit the door, ricocheted up, and uh, Keith says it missed his head by uh, no more than two inches. Uh, an Indian came at us at that time with a, a pistol, uh, ordered us out of the car, and at gunpoint had Keith uh, smash our uh, videotape camera and the uh, tape recorder onto the road. Uh, he then had us uh, lay in the road in the median, uh, threatened to blow our heads off, holding the, the gun at our heads, uh, tormented us for a while, then got into our rented car, uh, turned around toward the road, sped up what seemed to me an obvious attempt to run us over. Uh, I got up, and I just couldn't sit there and, and let him go at me, and again, he told me to lay down and drove by and again, threatened us many times with the, the gun to our heads. He finally left the area telling us to stay. Uh, a short time later, he drove off a few blocks and, and parked and went into a, an area. And we got up just, we were afraid of nothing else that a passing car might hit us and didn't really know what to do until uh, someone that lived right in the area in a trailer home yelled for us to come over. We were a little concerned that, uh, you know, we didn't know what we were getting into at the time, Don. And uh, We went into his home and uh, he gave us refuge. Uh, half hour later, uh, took us, swept us out of town into Bemidji uh, and we got out safely. How, how does it look up there now, Tom, up the, your last uh, sight of the place? Well, most of the residents of Red Lake have left the area. Uh, it seems that a, a group of maybe 100, 150 Indians are in town. Uh, they're all armed, but it, it seems to be a deserted town with uh, just a few people running around uh, firing guns. How about the FBI? Have they arrived on the scene? They are there now. They have blocked off the main road to Red Lake at this time, but they were, they were nowhere to be seen at uh, 3.30, 4 o'clock this afternoon. You have not told your story to the FBI? No, I have not. Not yet. 
We have just just really gotten here and uh, just starting to unravel now. All right, Tom. Uh, thank God you're with us. Well, thank you. Our best to uh, Keith as well. Thank you, Tom. And get back here as quick as you can. Will do. Okay, Tom. Thank you. Bye. Uh, we still have no clear indication exactly... Uh, whether that is going to end up there or not. We do have a report that they will, the Indians, the uh, uh, Native Americans, will call off any of the demonstrations that uh, they have going right now if they can make some of their demands made known and they want to make them known to the editor of the Bemidji Pioneer, a newspaper up there. And if those demands can uh, be printed in that paper, they may somehow call off the demonstration. Right now, all of the liquor stores, the on and off sale stores around the Red Lake area have been closed down and the FBI now on the scene. And that's the story, an incredible story from Tom Hanneman as well. We don't have any videotape, as you heard in Tom's report, because of the uh, bullets that were fired into our equipment, and that equipment now has been seized. So we don't have anything to show you as yet, but we may. There is other news. A North Branch firefighter remains...